Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ the King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing can separate. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Shall we bless that name? We bless your name, Jesus. The name that is above every the other name. name. That is exalted. There are the mention of that Jesus. name. Every knee surely bows. What a gracious name. What a holy name. Oh, what a wonderful name. What an amazing name. The name that is full of glory and full of grace. Oh, what a beautiful name. Oh, what a beautiful name. Shall we bless the name of Jesus? The name that is above every other name. The name of the Lord. That is a strong tower. The righteous running into it and they are saved. They are delivered. Oh, what a beautiful name. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise for who you are. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And good evening this evening. You are most welcome. World Conference 2021. Please be seated. We want to thank God for bringing us together again. It was um, a delightful conference two years ago with our dearest uncle all the way from Kaduna. And um, last year, we blessed the Lord. Everywhere was on lockdown. And so God is giving us a new beginning. Hallelujah. And so we have one of us that God has been using in the course of the build-up, as we always do, towards this conference. And like I announced on Sunday, particularly I can say and tell you that the favor of the Lord is already upon the meeting. Because here with us for this conference is not only Brother Vincent and Sister Mel and Gobo, all the way from Birmingham, Alabama, but also from West Coast. We also have another brother, a pastor, a disciple of the Lord, Pastor Mark Copeland. And so, um, these are vessels that God has set aside for this season. And I know that God, our God, will bless you. It is his word that makes all. His word is spirit and life. It awakens the letter kills, the spirit make it alive. And so tonight, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, to World Conference 2021, as you join me to welcome Brother Vincent Ngobo. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Are you all happy this evening? It's my honor to be here with you live at the beginning of this world conference. We thank the Lord for his mercy and his grace that has made it possible for us to be here 
uh, with you, uh, with my wife. I also want to thank you so much for your hospitality and the love that you've extended to us, me and my wife, as well as my bosom friend, Pastor Mike Copeland. Um, he, he agreed to come to join us this weekend at a very short notice. So we are grateful to God that he was able to make uh, this trip to be with us this weekend. Thank you so much, and I want to say a big thank you to the mother of the house, our pastor's wife. Thank you for your prayers and how you've been taking care of us. Uh, even though you're behind the scene, we, know, we can see your signature hand everywhere. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, shall we pray together briefly? <clears throat> our Father and our God, we are very grateful to you for your grace and your mercy towards us. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us unto yourself at the beginning of this world conference. We ask, Lord, that you open our hearts to be receptive to your word. We ask, Father, that this word that you will be sending to us in the course of this weekend, it will surely mix with faith within our hearts, that it will produce its desired result. Our Father, we bless you. We ask, Lord, that the sweet fellowship of your spirit will abide with us uh, as we begin this conference. We ask, Lord, that your presence will begin with us. Your presence will tarry with us. And that, Lord, by your spirit, you will encounter our life afresh in the name of the Lord Jesus. We commend ourselves and we ask, Lord, that your mercy and your grace will find us worthy to look for you and to take hold of the things that you'll be showing us in the spirit that none of us will meet out in what you've already set to do with our lives. Thank you, mighty Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, I want to bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus, unto whom we have come, unto whom we have come to present ourselves. Uh, just as we've announced, this is the World Conference. And this conference will be taking us till uh, Friday at the vigil, as well as concluding on Sunday with the Sunday service. So I'm trusting that the Lord will just begin with us, just to look at introduction to, to the Word, the importance of God's Word, uh, first of all to God Himself, I will also look at the importance of God's word to us as human beings and the, the power of God's word to deliver us from the hand of that who have taken us captive. Um, all human beings have been held captive by the flesh. We want to see how God by his word, brought victory over the flesh. So this evening, I will just, uh, introduction, just look briefly at these three segments of what the word of God has accomplished even for us as believers. Amen. Uh, I would like to begin from a very familiar passage, um, the book of Luke, chapter 8. Luke, chapter 8. I would like to read from verses 
four. Luke chapter eight. I would like to read from verses four. We'll read from verse four down to verse 11. And I will want to begin from the New King James Version of the scripture. It's a familiar parable that we all are very familiar with. And so it's always good to start with what is familiar with us. In Luke chapter 8, from verse 4, I read, And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and shook it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried. He was ears to hear. Let him hear. Then his disciple asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Amen. Shall we turn quickly to Genesis chapter 3? Genesis chapter 3. I want us to turn to cha uh, chapter 3 from verses 14 of Genesis. Let's begin it from verses 14. I read from the New King James Version as again. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field on your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise is heal. Amen. May the Lord bless his word in our heart. In Jesus name. Amen. Now I will want us to look very briefly at the pronouncement that took place in Genesis. That right at the beginning God have declared his word God has passed judgment on the serpent that was an instrument in causing the fall of man and as we look at the judgment that God placed on the serpent um, it was very interesting that God right at the beginning of time before man begins to multiply and populate the earth 
the word of God has gone forth and the judgment of God that came upon the serpent um, I did say the last time was an everlasting judgment the judgment that the serpent must eat dust until the end of time but you see towards the end of chapter 15 God was talking about the seed he said I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel so when we look at this verse of scripture you will find out that there are two enmities that is going on there is one between the woman and the serpent itself the second enmity is between the seed the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman and as God was speaking I was very careful to look at what is God saying what was he intending to achieve with this pronouncement I found out that even right here in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 God has determined that there is going to be victory by his word that every victory that God will have beginning from Genesis up to, to Revelation is the victory that comes only by his word that no matter what the enemy will do no matter the attack of the devil no matter how the enemy is mobilized to cause pain to cause destruction in the human race the victory that God has placed over the serpent is the victory of the seed now if you look at this passage God was saying that the seed of the serpent will bruise the heel of the woman um, what I understand by that is no matter what the devil will do is only going to be limited no matter the nature of the attack of Satan to the human race it can be contained it is not going to be a fatal attack even the issue of sin that came through the serpent is only going to cause a limited damage if only you can connect to the seed of the woman I find out that sin actually is only an obstacle in your relationship with God you know anything that has to do with your heel it slows you down isn't it for example if you are walking on the road and you hit your leg and there was a bruise of course you will feel the pain apart from the fact that you're feeling the pain you will not run as quickly you can't walk as quickly as you ought to because there was a pain on your heel and even if you're beaten by a snake at a heel uh, if you are rushed to an emergency on time it can be contained there can be a solution so I'm discovering that whatever the devil will do to humanity it is not a permanent damage he will bruise your heel 
but the seed of the woman will bruise his head it will bruise his head so so god providing a seed that will bruise the head of satan meaning is going to be a fatal destruction is going to be a complete victory there is no escaping it you know the easiest way to kill a snake is where the head just just position your stick and give it one single blow to the head it's gone if you try to hit it at the tail or in the middle you're just wasting your time so i am seeing that god have declared that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent and that is going to be a final victory over and above anything that the enemy is trying to do now the reason why i read luke 8 that parable jesus was very very emphatic he said the seed is the word of god the seed that god was speaking about here is talking about the word of god so i want us to just note very quickly in fact if you read genesis the book of genesis when the book of genesis is talking about seed especially in this passage of scripture may it be clear to us that it's not talking about money the seed in scripture is primarily basically talking about a life the life so in this passage of scripture when god says and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel god is talking about the seed the life the son that he will be sending to the world to bring the final victory over satan and all the kingdom of darkness that has come upon the face of the world so as we settle down this evening and through this weekend looking at the world conference i want us to begin by noting that in the old testament when god was talking about the seed of the woman is actually talking about his word the word of god please permit me to look with you at luke chapter 7 luke the seventh chapter quickly let's begin our reading from verse from verse 7 luke chapter 7 verse 7 it said therefore i do not even think myself worthy to come to you but say the word and my servant will be healed for i also am a man placed under authority having soldiers under me and i said to one go and he goes and to another come and he comes and to my and to my servant do this and he does it when jesus heard these things he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that follow him i say to you 
I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Praise the Lord. You see, this was the response that was coming from the heart of the Lord Jesus. After he had heard this man spoke. He is not even a believer. He is a centurion. He is a Roman soldier. Yet, he understand the power of the word. He understand that once you connect to a man of authority and all you need from such a man is for him to speak the word that the man necess doesn't necessarily even have to come to your house you don't necessarily have to meet him physically all you want is for that man of authority to speak the word and what marveled Jesus was that this man has faith in the word of Jesus not in Jesus coming to his house I don't know if you're understanding me he believes in Jesus there was something about Jesus that he believes. But his faith was so strong that Jesus didn't need to come physically to him before his servant can be healed. His faith is in what Jesus will say. And that will be sufficient to effect the healing of his servant. I don't know if you are getting this picture. The servant is at home dying. The sickness that came upon the servant was going to kill him. He was going to die from what, whatever suffering. And this man, out of concern for his servant not wanting his servant to die begin to seek at Jesus and he said Jesus please do something to help my servant and Jesus was willing to go with him to see the servant to lay his hand the man said no 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 don't come don't come where you are right now speak the word is sufficient to heal my servant at home what a faith what confidence this man had in the spoken word of the Lord and I am praying that if we can get such men men and women even in our congregation that can have such faith in in the word of god there is going to be victory you're going to experience victory no matter the situation the reason is because jesus have not changed he is the same yesterday today and forever what have changed is the confidence we have in his word. What have changed is our lack of interest in his word. What have changed is that we put a lot of confidence in the man that speaks the word rather than confidence in the world itself and i'm praying for us this week i'm even praying for myself that as i am growing in my walk with the lord that my confidence will be in the unchanging word of god now the reason why i'm 
taking us this way is that the word of God is so effective that it does not diminish in its power with time. The word of God is so potent as it was in the beginning as it was in the days of Jesus, as it was in the days of the apostles, and so it is so effective and potent even in our own day. If we can have faith and tap into God's word, what the apostles of old experience, we also will be experiencing it. And that's what God is laboring over our lives. Now, so what is the problem? Why is so much preaching going on? So much activities going on in the church. And we're having less and less genuine transformation that comes by the word. Why is our generation so deficient in the outcome of the word of God that we are hearing day in, day out? What is the problem? If the problem is not the word, if the word of God has not changed, if the word of God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, so why are we not experiencing the same result that we saw the disciples experience in, our, in their own day. Why? What is the issue? Now, I want us to look at the issue very briefly. It's not the only issue I perceive. There are other issues that mitigate against the word of God being effective, either in our life or in our congregation. Uh, what I saw is in Luke chapter 8, the passage that we've read, the parable of the sower. Can we turn to Luke chapter 8 and we'll look at some few issues there that I see the Lord raising for us to consider this evening. Now, verse 4 that we've read, from verse 4 to verse six or seven you begin to see God was pointing at something now the first thing I noticed was that there was multitude that gathered to hear the word and as the crowd came to Jesus he began to speak to them in parables he began to present the word of God to them in parables. And after he has finished speaking, the disciples asked him a question. They were very concerned and they said, say, why? Why? Why do you say these things in parable? Why are you speaking to this multitude in parables? Why don't you speak to them directly? And Jesus just smiled and said, Look, he said to the disciples, To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to the rest, it is given in parables. That is the first red flag that came to my heart. That even Jesus himself knew that he cannot speak directly to the multitude because they will not understand. The things of the kingdom, spiritual truth, the flesh cannot comprehend it. The Bible says the carnal mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. They don't have the ability and the capability to understand spiritual truth. 
So Jesus himself will not waste time to be speaking to them directly because they will never understand. As long as they are still in the multitude, as long as they are still following him as multitude, as long as they have not paid the price to become his disciples, Jesus knew that they will never comprehend the things of the kingdom. It will always be a mystery to them. And I just also want to say to us very, very humbly that if you are not yet a disciple, if you are not have paid the cost, paid the price, fulfill the conditions of discipleship, the things of the kingdom will always be coming to you as a parable. There is no way, there is no way the carnal mind, the natural man, the Adamic nature, there is no way it can comprehend the things of the Spirit. Even in the days of Jesus, he knew it. And he said, no, to them is only coming to them. I only speak to them in parables. But unto you, the disciples, you who have paid the cost and paid the price to be my disciple, it is given to you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And that is where God is taking us. My hope and my expectation is that at the end of our sitting down together, you also can be numbered as his disciple so that he will now begin to reveal to you the mysteries of the kingdom so that you can position your life and tap into the, the world, the spirit world that is only accessible to all those who are following him in discipleship. Please turn with me to 1 John chapter 3. We'll come back to this passage to look at some few things, but let's go to 1 John chapter 3 as we begin to lay this matter of the word, the, the word of God. 1 John chapter 3. Are you there with me? 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. 1 John chapter 3, from verse 7. It said, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practice righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He will sin is of the devil for the devil have seen from the beginning for this purpose the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whoever has been born of God does not sin for he sees remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God Amen what destroys the works of the devil is the seed is the seed everyone and every human being that has been born of the seed is victorious your victory is coming because of the seed that has been birthed 
within you now the scripture says it says for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil whoever has been born of god does not sin because or for his seed remains in him the word i want to emphasize there is the word remains you know in the parable of the sower if you read it carefully you will find out that the seed that was cast did not remain where it was cast into something else came and tampered with the seed the bible says the seed that fell on the wayside it was trampled did not give the seed ample time to take root the seed that fell among thorns did not remain and so it did not affect the change that it was supposed to bring the only seed that bear fruit that produces and multiply was the seed that fell on a good soil it remained it remained and so it produced it bring forth results now for you to have victory or rather for the world to have victory over your life that seed must abide it must remain god must help you to contain the seed within the reason is because it is by the seed of God that the works of the devil can be destroyed. The enemy cannot be destroyed any other means except by the word. So if you must have victory in this world, if you must experience the victory that comes by the word it must be that the word is consistently abiding within you that you must of a necessity do everything within your means to protect that seed because it is by that seed that righteousness holiness and the victory over sin can be guaranteed once that seed is absent in anybody's life let me not deceive you you will be defeated woe betide anyone that is not abiding in the seed so what we are talking about you can see that it's not it's not it's not an ordinary issue we are dealing with it is the core of our faith this is the center of the Christian faith. And I just want us to know if any one of us has been born well, if our born again experience is genuine in the sense that it is the word, it is the seed that it is God that gave birth to you and it is God that nurture your life 
it is God that is raising you up. You are bound for victory. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is outside the world. Now the reason why we are experiencing what we are experiencing in the body of Christ today is coming from the fact that we still have a lot of multitude flocking around the Lord Jesus. And at best, they are only receiving the word as a parable. And each time he cast the seed, it fell on tawny hearts. It fell on absent-mindedness, the wayside heart. And before God will begin to walk on the seed, it's not even there, it's gone. And so he really cannot do anything. May I say to us, I don't know, please don't misunderstand me. I hope you will understand that God is powerless without his word. Anything and all things that God does, he does it by his word. God, actually God, is not God without his word. Actually, God, he honors his word more than his names. The word of God is so precious to God. It's so precious to God that when he speaks it, he washes it to perform it. None of God's word will ever fall to the ground except it accomplish that for which it is spoken of. God, he can speak his word for a thousand years to come, he will still fulfill it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. God will allow this earth to pass away. But his word is yea and amen. It's so unfortunate we are actually an unfortunate generation not taking God's word not taking God at his word God has spoken to us severally and yet we still treat him as if he has never spoken so many times you have received God's word it might even come to you as a whisper and yet you will rise up and continue your business as if God have not said anything. We treat God's word with the thing. Oh, how I pray that even for us here, as small as we are in Christ's church, we will begin to treasure the word of God in our hearts. Shall we read Isaiah 61 very quickly? Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61. Are you there? I'll read from verse 1. To verse 3. 
the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Amen. When you are talking of planting, what do you plant? A huh? seed. It is the planting of the Lord in our lives that turns our ashes to beauty. It is the planting of God in our life. That we can grow up to become trees of righteousness. If God wants to produce righteous women, righteous men, a godly church, a church where the anointing of the Lord will be flowing freely, he will plant his word. The planting of the Lord produces trees of righteousness. Turn with me to Isaiah 51. Let me just span it through just quickly. I know my time is going. I will soon be ending. Please, Isaiah 51. Very quickly. Isaiah chapter 51. I know my time is gone. Please forgive me. Let me quickly take these few passages of scripture. Are you in Isaiah 51, verse 16? And I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hands that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say to Zion you are my people now I'm trying for us to see the connection that the seed is the word of God and whatever God wants to do on the face of the earth it is by his word and so when God says he will plant the heavens upon the earth. He said, I will put my word in your mouth. With that word in your mouth, the heavens will be planted on the earth. Is that powerful? That God is giving us the son of man. Those who belong to him. Those who are his. What he equipped us with. What he will give us. In order to advance his kingdom upon the earth. Is only his word. You, you really don't need money. To plant the heaven on the earth. Do you know what it means to plant heavens on earth? If you are speaking in money terms, how much money would you accumulate in order to establish heaven on earth? It's impossible. It's not possible. It can never be done. But the only way it can be done 
is that I will put my word in your mouth. My brothers, my sisters, if you are seeking power, if you are seeking something with which you want to serve God effectively, seek his word. Invest in his word. Do all that you can do so that your life can attract God to you. And if God can release his word constantly on a daily basis to you, he will use you through his word in your mouth to plant the heavens. You will be so effective. So if there is anything you want to seek from the very hand of God, what would you seek? His word. His word. The unchanging word of God. When you are talking of power, it only comes by the word of God. And so I was just talking with pastor this evening. You know, at first when I saw the theme for this weekend, I said, what kind of, what kind of conference is that? The word conference. You know, it's, it sounds so simple, so ordinary, right? It's not, it's not power of the word. No, it's just the word. And I was... I almost call him and say, ah, can you ask something that will give the word more power? <laughs> Thank God I didn't call him. It was as I came and I was meditating on the theme again. I said, ah, I said, Pastor, God really gave you wisdom to just call it the word conference. I never saw it until God began to show me the wisdom behind the word. I say, oh my God. Oh my God. How excellent is your name. How marvelous are your word towards us. And began to see how we have treated the word of God so casually. I began to see how we begin to relegate the word of God to the background. For so many of us, we need anointing of the spirit. We need healing. We need miracles. All of those are good. But anointing miracle that does not come from the foundation of the world is not flowing from the world is not a genuine anointing it will not last it will fizzle out the kind of anointing that just come and blows you and you fall to the ground and nothing after that nothing changes but the kind of anointing that comes as he speaks the word, your faith is mixing it up. You are believing it. You are not questioning it. There is no doubt in your heart. Your life depends on the raw spoken word of God. Your life is anchored on the word of God. There is victory. You will soon begin to walk in victory. Everywhere you go. God will begin to move on your behalf. Why? Because you are standing. Your life is built on the unchanging world. Of God. Oh, my brother, my sister, the final victory that I saw, that I saw 
was when the word becomes flesh. When the word becomes flesh and he dwells amongst us. Now, please hear me. Hear me. The devil he heard about the seed that was going to bruise his head. But he didn't know how it will happen. He was he was blindsided on how the seed will crush his head. It ne he never understood it. But God had a divine plan. That when that word becomes flesh, and the word that was becoming flesh was destined on Calvary, the word becoming flesh and ending on Calvary was a mystery was a mystery for the devil and it was a mystery to all those in the multitude and it's still a mystery even up to today as we speak they never never understood it the Bible says if they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They never knew. Even the Pharisees, the high priest, all the people of that time that were clamoring, crucify him, it was hidden. It was a hidden secret. But when the word that became flesh was hanging on the cross, Ah, that was a permanent victory. A victory that transcends all generation. A victory that was rough 2,000 years ago is still as effective even now. It was effective even right the beginning of time up to the time that Jesus went to the cross and even now and if Jesus would tarry for another thousand years it will still be effective it is an un, un, unchanging victory that's what we are talking about. That is what God is bringing us into. That is what God is offering to us. That if only we can connect with this word. If only we can believe this word. If only we can rest our destiny on this word then victory is sure. And I'm trusting the Lord as he gradually take us through this, this conference and onward that you will find your location in the place where God can assess your life with his word. It's my prayer that God for each one of us a fresh desire of his word a fresh longing for his word a fresh pursuit of his word that you are seeking him not the things he can give but you are seeking the word itself ah you are seeking him well the Lord will help us. 
I'm trusting that what God has begun with us as we come again on Friday to look at it and to pray that something will begin to happen in your heart so that the word of God will take its prime place even within each one of us in the name of the Lord Jesus. That just as our dear pastor is passionate about his word, the word of God, that you also will be that much passionate. That we have a congregation. We have a fellowship. That we all, we are standing. We are being built on this unchanging word of God. It's my prayer that there will not be a dwarf in this church. That each one of us will be growing side by side. We are growing in his word. That you can take your stand wherever you are as Christ church member. That you are a man and you are a woman of his word. That you will not just settle down to be spoon fed from the pulpit. That even after you've gathered around the pulpit... When you go back to your private home, you will go back again and press in and say, God, you've given me a spoonful at the pulpit. Can you show me how to connect to you the source? He will connect you. And your very life will be a container wherein the living water the everlasting fountain is flowing and gushing out of your life. That is the kind of vessel. Those are the kind of uh, vessel that God is looking to raise in our generation. Shall we bow down to pray? Do you desire to be such vessel? Do you desire do you desire the word of God? First, I just want us to pray and say, God, I am so sorry I have neglected your word. Look at the times we neglect God's word. Can you just ask God for mercy this evening? As a worker, you spend so much time investing in so many things. Invest in clothes. You invest in food. But not in God's word. Say, so God, change my situation. Cause me to be hungry after you. Creating me a deep hunger for your word. It is by the word of God the heavens we are made. So the visible and invisible things came about by his word. Please, my sister, my brother, just pray. Release your word to me. We are still in prayer. I will ask our brother Mark Copeland to come and help us to pray over this issue that God is raising with us uh, tonight. Brother Mark. Amen. Shall we look to the Lord? Let's stand, if we can, in God's presence as we just come to the Lord. We all come to the Lord. Just We're picturing a big altar where we're all just coming to consider what the Lord said to us tonight concerning the Word of God. 
Let's come to God's presence in humility. Lord, give us your word. Father, may your word fall in our hearts as the seed that fell on good ground. Father, as we read that parable, we see the various grounds that the seed fell on. Tonight, we want to declare that we are not wayside, stony or thorny ground, but that because our hearts are open to you, because in humility we recognize that we can do nothing without your word. Lord, we come bowing our hearts down before you. We come in humility, Father, knowing that you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. Father, I just have a sense in my heart that there are some that are here that need to be broken once again broken Lord God over what the word has yet to accomplish in our hearts broken over the fact that our hearts are yet to open to all that the Lord wants to do father humble enough to come and say Lord don't pass me by from what our hearts have heard tonight Lord we plead with you as we have heard your word tonight, Lord. Thank you for giving us ears to hear. You sent the word that was needed to begin this word conference. Father, we hear you clearly. Our hearts will be cultivated and prepared as good ground so that the word can produce some 30, some 60, Father, even 100 fold. Optimum yield is the power that your word can bring forth as to what we have heard. Father, we cry out to you. This is, this is not about bishops and, and, and apostles and prophets. It's about us and where we are in our walk concerning the word of God. Father, if there's anyone here that has forsaken the word, has 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 maybe found what they think is another way. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Father, we come back to the word of God. You uphold all things by the word of your power. We thank you tonight, Father, that as we come to you, Lord, our heart's cry is, Lord, we need the word of God. Not an increase in our finances. Not another blessing. The word of the living God. Lord, that's what can sustain us. That's what can compel us to keep coming. Your word, Father. We cry out to you tonight. For the word of God that is coming. It has come tonight, Lord. And we come to humble ourselves. And in this word conference, Father, your word will bring us to a place where our hearts are humbled before you that you might release grace to accomplish your purpose thank you father we give you praise tonight lord if there's anything that we've done that has in any way violated or undermined what the word is doing father please help us help us lord help us god Help us as we come to you to say, Lord, forgive us for whatever has brought about this kind of heart that cannot yield to the word of God. Please help us, Father. And then bring us into another level of insight into the word of God. As we open our hearts, as we humble ourselves, when Jesus appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, the word of God says, and beginning at Moses. And he went all the way through the scripture and sharing with them the things concerning himself. God, he unfolded the word to them. That's what we're asking you for tonight. 
Lord, what you have spoken, unfold it to us. Reveal it to us, Lord, as we leave, Father God, as we prepare. You will, by your spirit, begin to speak and continue to speak until it registers in our hearts, until it awakens us to commune with you more to gain understanding. Father, I pray for this house. I pray and I sense, Lord, that they will become as the Bereans who were more noble than those of Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures daily to see if those things were true. I declare that over this house, that this word conference will transform this entire fellowship and bring a spiritual nobility in the name of Jesus. Well, not just pastor, but all the members will be in the word daily, focused on what you're saying, hearing what you're saying, and eager to carry it out to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father, that you can use a beginning here to take this entire city, to take this land, to spread across the land. These are those that carry the word of God. There they are, those that carry the word of God. Let it break forth. Let it break forth, Father, to the glory of your name. Lord, be glorified in all that is said and done. We thank you and we give you praise. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Pastor.